Hello guys, I'm Dr. Fahim Khan, consultant rheumatologist in the Ottoman Hospital Kilkenny. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you about psoriatic arthritis, which is part of the rheumatology talks. Psoriatic arthritis is seen in 15% of patients who have psoriasis. So let's talk about psoriasis. Psoriasis is a skin rash which appears as red patches with silver scaly skin. So it has a red patch with silver scales on it. And it's qu quite common actually on the extremities. And mostly we see it on elbows, hands, but you can also affect the trunk, knees, soles of the feet, soles of the feet, and also palms of the hands scalp as well. And sometimes we see nail changes with psoriasis as well, which is quite typical of the patient with psoriasis. And a patient, up to 15% of patients who have psoriasis can develop psoriatic arthritis. And we also see patients who have psoriatic arthritis, 40% of their family members can have psoriasis. So there is a link between psoriasis to psoriatic arthritis. We don't know what is the cause of psoriatic arthritis, but I think it's, if you look at evidence-based studies, familial genetic predisposition. It's an inflammatory arthritis, and there are many conditions that could either trigger the either the onset of psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis, like infection, particularly streptococcal infection, can cause a rash of psoriasis. Stress also brings on psoriasis rash and psoriatic arthritis. The age group that is normally affected is between 30 to 50 years old, and it's equally common in men and women. But psoriatic arthritis is a destructive arthritis, leads to joint damage. So almost any joint can be affected, but we see different types of manifestation of psoriatic arthritis. So normally there are five different types of psoriatic arthritis that presents. The most common type would be mostly affecting the hands. So we see patients who have either, it's medically called oligoarticular, that is a few joints involvement. They could have a joint involvement here, another joint on the finger, and different joints. Sometimes it could affect the knees as well. And then the other manifestation of the arthritis is affecting the knuckles both hand knuckles and it can also affect these joints close to the nail called distal interphalangeal joint and the, the other type of arthritis there are five types so let's see the third type would be can only affect close to the nail these joints which are called distal interphalangeal joint DIP joint but most of the patient who are, would have arthritis manifesting in these joints their nail would be affected so we see nail separation nail dystrophy there are pits on the nails, which we see it in patients with, mostly with the DIP joint involvement. Then we have a condition called arthritis mutilans, and thankfully we don't see it, it which effectively destroys the underneath bone. And then the fifth type of psoriatic arthritis affects your spine. It can affect the sacroiliac joint and your back spine of the back, which is called spondylitis, which presents with back pain associated with stiffness. But psoriatic arthritis also presents with a medical term that we use, inflammation of the tendons attachment to the bone, enthesitis or enthesopathy. We see patients who would have recurrent plantar fasciitis or heel spurs, or they could also present with recurrent Achilles tendonitis or swollen fingers, swollen toes. It's called enthesopathy, enthesitis. In children, psoriatic arthritis is also associated with eye problems, uveitis. But the problem with psoriatic arthritis is it destroys joints. The joints are destroyed. That's why treatment should be start, started as soon as possible. And patients should come and see their rheumatologist as soon as possible if they develop one or more than one joint swelling associated with stiffness 
and pain. Some patients may not have to have a rash of psoriasis and if they dig more into their family history, they'll see that there's one or two family members, whether it is their siblings, parents, cousins, or anyone in the family could also have psoriasis rash. So psoriasis rash is also an important point in the history. So with the rheumatologist patients, we assess them, take their history, look for any other conditions, outrule them, blood tests are normally done. We always check for rheumatoid factor, which normally we see in the blood test would be negative. So serratic arthritis is mostly a seronegative inflammatory arthritis. We check their, their anti-CCP antibody test. We also check the uric acid because patient with psoriatic arthritis, the uric acid level tend to be a little bit on the upper side. And after their baseline blood tests are done, once they're diagnosed in clinical examination, we check their joints with the ultrasound. So in my clinic, you see the ultrasound machine there. This is the Sonocyte M Turbo ultrasound, which is a great machine for patients who have <coughs> bedside examination. We do them for evidence of psoriatic arthritis. And we see clearly joint swelling, synovial swelling, synovitis. And to, we also can predict whether they have suffered joint damage in future, they can have it, or whether they have already um, seen whether they have also suffered joint damage. So ultrasound does help us, apart from looking for fluid in the joints. So this is the musculoskeletal ultrasound examination is performed for the patient. And if required, x-rays are done for their hands, feet, or back. And then further imaging can also be done if we, have, if we want to, if we are suspecting patients who have back pain associated with stiffness in, in the context of psoriatic arthritis. If we want to outrule sacroiliitis, which is also uh, documented on clinical examination, then further imaging with MRI scan or MR scan is also done to look for it, or MRI of the spine. So patients are put on the treatment as soon as possible, and the drugs used in psoriatic arthritis, there's so many of them, but I just want to talk to you about the most common first-line drug is methotrexate. If they have peripheral joint involvement, we always start with methotrexate. And methotrexate is also used for many different types of inflammatory arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis, and so on. So it's a drug that we start the patient on. Folic acid is given with methotrexate. There are many other medications, <coughs> excuse me, that can be used in patients with psoriatic arthritis. Sulfasalazine can also be used, but these, these medications are becoming more so outdated or obsolete medication at this stage, but the first drug choice is always methotrexate. <clears throat> and if required, biologic therapy is added on to uh, patients with psoriatic arthritis, and there are special indications for them. These are antibodies, biologics used. There are different types of them. I'll give you some example. Um, and we try to target the skin rash with arthritis as well, so there are medication injections available and they clear the skin rash and also treat the arthritis, a drug called Stellara, a drug called Humira or Adelimumab, a drug called Cosentix, and there's so many of them. So we pick the drugs and there are other anti-TNF biologics as well. So we pick the drug according to the clinical indication and they can be added on to methotrexate. Sometimes they're used on their own and it prevents joint damage. And that's the important thing that we are targeting for prevention of any joint damage. And in the beginning, if required, anti-inflammatory medication also used. We tend to avoid giving steroids to pay, or bigger dose of steroid to patient because steroids can cause a psoriasis rash flare up. So they are avoided. Similarly, a drug called hydroxychloroquine, which is anti-malarial pig. We tend not to use this medication a lot in patient with psoriatic arthritis because it also causes psoriasis flare-up. So patients are regularly followed up when they're on medication, their blood tests are done regularly, follow them in the rheumatology clinic, there's a protocol for them. But what I want to say is that patient with psoriatic arthritis has, nowadays with the new medications available, 
best outcome, best treatment available. And once they are under rheumatologist and also they are monitored for their blood test, lab test by their primary care physicians, patients do very well. Of course, exercises remain to be a very important part of the treatment of psoriatic arthritis. And um, regular exercises are very important. So exercise would be hand muscle strengthening exercises, back exercises, shoulder exercises, and similarly swimming or hydrotherapy, yoga, pilates, etc. So exercise remain to be important as regards to maintaining the, the motion, range of motion of the exercises and developing strength uh, in the muscles and mobilization of the joints. So guys, if you have any question, concern, please do not hesitate to contact me. You can also contact me on my website address for any information, any uh, information you guys require as regards to this talk. If you want to send me your feedback, the details, I'm going to show it to you there in front. So you can look at the web address, www.arthritisandpainclinic.com. The email is rheumatologyclinics at gmail.com. So guys, this is Dr. Fahim Khan, consultant rheumatologist at the Otivan Hospital Kilkenny. I'll talk to you again with another topic in rheumatology. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.